I'd like to ask you about AJ Epinesa, just, you know, what you see from his game now that you've been on the field with him uh, for a while. And also, um, how's uh, the young guy fitting into a room that has 24 years of experience between uh, yourself, Jerry, and Trent, and, you know, older guys, different stages of life with, you know, welcoming the rookie in? Uh, one thing I can say about um, AJ is he, he, he willing to learn. And, um, every chance you get, he pulled me to the side, asked me different questions, you know, about the system or all the things that I, you know, had to contribute to get, you know, to success. And I see him pulling guys like Jerry to the side as well, you know, um, Trent to the side. And um, they got, he have a um, bright future. Nice um, body frame. He's a solid kid. Very fast. And he's just ready, man. Thank you. Well. Hey, Mark, Mike Catalan in Rochester. Uh, you came into this game, the NFL, as an undrafted free agent. Are you always that guy? Do you hold on to that? Is that part of who you are? Or do you lose that, I'll say, sort of title that goes with that? No, um, you know, like, to me, it's, it's a testimony. You know, to show, you know, young uh, guys who come in and draft that, you know, it's not about what round you get drafted. It's about you know, the opportunity that you get in production. So it don't matter, you can get drafted the first round, second round, third round. If you don't produce in this league, you know, you'll find yourself out. So for me, it's just, it's, it's a testimony. And I always hold on to it because it, it's, it's who I am, you know. And, I, and if I had to change and do it all over again, I'd do it again because it gave me this ground about myself. And, and if I could follow up on that, you, it was so difficult, I'm sure, to get noticed. But how about these guys now that are undrafted free agents that are on your team with no offseason, no, you know, no uh, exhibition games or no preseason games? What do you think it's like for them? Um, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, too. And I was like, man, it's going to be kind of rough on those guys. You know, to really show coaches what, you know, what you, what you can do. So for those guys, they got to come and, you know, every day at practice. You got to fly around. You got to do everything full speed to really just catch the coach's eye. And, um, man, that's a good question, man. I'm glad you asked that question because I asked myself that the other day, like, what can these guys do to get noticed by coaches? And the thing I came up with is just play hard, man, and just leave them guys in. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Mario, it's uh, Josh Reed with the CBS station here in Buffalo. Um, I know it's only been a couple of practices out there with the, with the guys on defense, but is there maybe a guy that now that you've been on the field with him, you've gone, wow, this guy's even better than I kind of anticipated and kind of thought he was? Um, Jermaine, you know, um, I seen him last year, you know what I'm saying? We played against him at like the joint practice and preseason and everything. And I never really just walked up on this guy and just seen how big and tall he really is. So, cause I really didn't, you know, remember his face well when I first met him. So when I first got here, I like, uh, that's the end right there? You know what I'm saying? I like, that's the end? And they're like, no, nah, man, that's your man, man, that's your linebacker. I said, he a middle backer? They're like, yeah, he a little better. So then I had to go chop it up with, you know what I'm saying, tell him, bro, you're tall. Like, you're a tall head. And you, you're like my size, you know what I'm saying, playing middle linebacker. So it was like my hat's off to him. But to see, you know, um, how the term he is to fly around to the ball, you know, make plays, and, you know, because he the quarterback of defense, you know, and to get us lined up, bro, a beast. I'm liking, I'm seeing great things out of the young man. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Mario. I appreciate it. You are. Mario Addison, a.k.a. Yo-Yo, Mookie Rockins, Buffalo Sports Community. How you doing? I'm doing well, big guy. You? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, we got some uh, breaking news yesterday that your former coach, Rob uh, you know, has cancer. You know, what was your thoughts on that? Um, Ron was a good guy, man. I um, I played up on the run since, you know, the end of 2012 up until last year. And um, he always installed in the players, you know, like three things that you can, you know, you can control. 
and that's your inner ape. You control your, your attitude, your preparation, and your effort. And those three things always, you know, stuck with me. Not not only on the field, but off the field as well. But, um, yes, sir. you know, I seen his daughter um, post something this morning saying that he caught it early. Counselor. He, um, he, he, um, he went to, you know what I'm saying, treatment. He, he, he caught everything early. So the counselor that he do have is treatable and curable. So that's a blessing. That was a, a lift off my shoulders when I heard that. And, but I know him personally. He's one of those guys. He's very strong, man. He's very strong. And um, he definitely going to beat this thing. And I'm praying for him and his family. Absolutely. And I had the opportunity to speak with him uh, during the Super Bowl. Uh, and he mentioned, he spoke real highly of you. Uh, he said that the Bills was trying to get you last year, but it was too valuable to let go last year. So uh, with that being said, uh, you had stints in, in, in Chicago, Indianapolis, and uh, in Carolina. Um, what separates this uh, franchise from anyone else, man? Um, you know, when I first got here, I was like, um, you know, this franchise is real similar to, you know, Carolina. Because, you know, most of the guys, you know, kind of play, you know, kind of coach along each other and got the same core values. Mm -hmm. But here, man, it's, 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 it's different. You know, it's, it's, it's family, man. It's no selfish at all. You know, we need one another to, you know, influence each other and push each other. And, um, and, it, and it's fun. Like, we actually have fun here. It ain't all it's, – it's about football. Now, it's about winning. Let's say, let, let, let me get it off how much. It's, it's all about winning, and we're here to win. But at the same time, man, here they they, they, they make it fun to come to work. And Cole McDermott, Cole McDermott do a great job with, you know, letting the guys be themselves. And I love that about here. And, um, you know, I walk around, and all the younger players call me OG or Unc, you know, and I'm starting to em embrace that role. You know, it, it's, just, it's, it's a fun environment to be along, and it's a great organization. Absolutely. I know you can't wait to have fun on that field, man. So best of luck to you. Thank you. Okay, Mario, it's Mark Gaughan from the Buffalo News here. Uh, two quick questions. One, Quentin Jefferson played right end, left end for Seattle, both defensive tackle spots. Just uh, kind of your impressions of Quentin. Look, Quentin is a beast. <laughs> Quentin one of those guys that he'll fool you. Like, you would think that, you know, that he can't play on the inside, you would think that he's too small to play on the inside, but when he get in there, he's straight beasting people. So me and Quinn, you know, we ran a few games that uh, in one on ones so far, and um, I had a lot of success, you know, rolling with him. But, um, okay. I seen him on film, how good he was, but that don't mean nothing until you see him in person. And that's oh. playing with the guy, like he's a straight up beast, and I'm glad to be, you know, playing beside him. Great. And that leads, leads into my next question, which is, uh, as a veteran, like Jerry Hughes and Kyle Williams over time became great at playing games, twists, uh, knowing exactly what, setting up linemen perfectly, timing everything. I mean, obviously you're a, a veteran, you do this so well, but coming to a new team, is this going to take some time? Or how quick can you develop that rapport on the fly with the guy next to you to be uh, as good as it as you were in Carolina? Um, you know, one thing about, you know, there's no I in team. And then coaches are going to put the best players out there that's going to be successful, that's going to make the team successful. One thing about this D-line, we got depth. Like, the ones are good. The tools are good. The, the, the threes are good. And coaches are doing a great job with mixing everybody up with each other. It ain't just the ones that's rolling. You know, it's the twos that rolling with the ones. The ones rolling with the twos. And some of the threes rolling with the ones. And threes rolling with the twos. So, he's doing a great job with filling each other. You know, we won't, have, we won't have to rely on, you know, four pass rushes. Everybody is pass rushers on this D-line. And that's, that's a great feeling. So I'm already, you know, feeling at home already with the guys I've been rolling with. And I damn near roll with everybody so far. And everybody's rolling. Thank you. Hey, man, uh, Mario. John Morrow with the AP here. 
Um, just to piggyback off that one, and I've got a follow-up question, um, is how much does familiarity has, has helped you guys, you know, have experience in this system, you know, coming into this year? Um, you know, I've been playing in this same system since, you know, 2012, when McDermott was, you know, my D.C. at Carolina. And it feel good. It feel at home, you know, to be able to, you know, go back into the, the same season that you've been playing the majority of your career. And um, even though I got away from it last year, and, you know, we went into a 3-4, uh, and I was a, a stand-up in, rushing out the edge, but it's still, I'm still doing the same thing I've been doing, rushing out the edge and dropping here and there. And I dropped a little in this season, too. So it's good, you know, to have familiarity in the system because I don't have to, you know, change or alter anything that I've been doing in my whole career. And just as the, my follow-up question is, Cam Newton's in the in the division now. You looking forward to that game against the Patriots? Oh, let me get my beer right. And to answer that question, hell yeah, I gotta add, I gotta add Cam to my sack list, man. You know, I've been playing alongside him, you know, most for years. Now, you know, at practice, I couldn't get too close to him. So now it's time for me to capitalize on Cam Newton whenever I get a chance. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, good, af good afternoon, Mario. George Radney, Challenger Community Newspaper. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing well, and you? Pretty good. Uh, question for you. I, I noticed in the last two days, a lot of teams have had, and especially Denver Broncos, for example, a lot of guys went down with a lot of leg cramps or pull-up muscles. What are you doing to keep your, uh, or what are the Bills doing, I should say, to keep you guys healthy and not, when you go on live, I know it's, you know, you go on live, but how do you how do you protect yourself from injuries uh, during this uh, preseason when you haven't had uh, live contact before? You know you got to do all the necessary things like um, hydrate, overhydrate, get rest. You know on your free time, scratch. You know all the things that you hold you should you should hold yourself accountable to. And um, you know throughout practice, you know we'll stop, break, hydrate again. Practice, break, hydrate, you know, you're just trying to keep everybody full of fluids. So that's a, that's a great thing that we do do. And then, you know, we work out together. Um, the defense work out with the defense, offense work out with the offense. But at the same time, we mix in different things to, you know, to make sure that the body's loose before you just jump into it. Do you think it's a plus that you, for veteran players like yourself, a plus that you haven't had contact, uh, that you're just now getting contact this late in the, uh, in the, in the training camp? Well, you know, not me. I like I like contact off the rip. You know, around this time, I you know my body been adjusted to it. If we already had OTAs and you know right. early on training camp, you know, so going into you know a season with what we doing now is is totally different. There for me and a lot of guys. But if I had to pick, if we didn't have a pandemic, I would have I would have chose to do it the normal way. Okay. Okay, great. So you chose the regular way of, of, of earlier than, than having the, uh, yes. a lay this long of a layoff and everything. Yes, sir. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much for your time and good luck this upcoming season. All right. Thank you. Hey, Mario. Heather Prusak here with the CBS station here in Buffalo. Good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, how did your expectations of this group and these guys compared to when you actually got out there and saw them in person um, and things like that? You know, um, when I played, like, to go back on when another guy asked the same question. Well, it wasn't the same question, same question. When they came to Carolina last year and we had a joint practice, I kind of, you know, peeked over there and see how they was, you know, dominating our D-line in Carolina and uh, having fun doing it. I was like, you know what? That's a group I love to be a part of, you know. And then, um, since we couldn't like really just get to know each other because of the pandemic, um, you know, I learned these guys a lot through Zoom meetings. But when I actually like get out here and ran around and you know had fun with the guys, I realized, you know, that I did have like high expectations, you know, for this group, for the D line, whatever. But when I actually got out there and ball with them, these guys are off the chart. 
Thanks, Mario. Hey, Mario. John Scott from Spectrum News. Just wanted to piggyback off of that one and ask what the dynamic is amongst this group. You've mentioned a few times the depth and the talent there. Is there like a, a competition standpoint? Is it pushing each other? What, what is the dynamic like here, even though it, it's been early? It's always competition. And we all gonna push each other. That's the name of the game. Compete, compete, compete. And to make each other better. And um these guys has they 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 made me elevate my game. You know, I made a couple of guys elevate their game. And I like it that way. You know, when you see a guy that's out there real smooth doing their thing, you're like, okay, okay, he's moving well. He's doing his thing, he's stabbing, he's spinning, he's doing all that. I like, I like that. So it made me, you know, elevate my game. And when they see an older guy like me, you know, coming off the edge, flying, like, wow, he still can move. It make the younger guys elevate their game. So, you know, it's always competition, always. Appreciate it. Thanks. No problem.